I'm not a mental health professional, but I'm going to go ahead and diagnose ChatGPT as having oppositional defiance disorder, because one time I even asked it, what did you do to deviate from my original prompt? And it told me, like it willfully disobeyed my original request knowingly. With the right settings, Solar 10.7b is a really good general purpose cooperative LLM where you give it a prompt and it kind of just gives you a nuts and bolts response. Sometimes LLMs that give you a lot of additional context, give their opinions, and filter out part of your request can be useful if you want to engage in a critical thinking kind of discussion. That's why ChatGPT works with you and not for you. And so do other language models. Do you need straightforward responses to specific prompts? You want to cut out all the fluff? I'll show you how. And it's uncensored. It's available in Olama. It's also available in LM Studio. If you're using text generation web UI and you're going to go to Hugging Face to get it, Solar 10.7 be instruct uncensored. And I'm going to go into the files. And I found that on my RTX 3080, this Q6 runs pretty good. So we'll get that one. To download this model into text generation web UI, you're going to put the name of the model card here and the specific file you want to download here because if i were to try to download the whole entire model it's going to grab all these different variants of it when really the one i want is just the q6 one thing i think is really cool about lm studio is if you click on search in the menu this whole area here is a browser for the hugging face repos with all the models they have so if i were to type in solar and hit go it's going to come up with all the bloke solar stuff and other variants of the solar language model. If you look here at solar 10.7b instruct uncensored, if I click on that, it's going to show all the different GGUF files within there. I'm going to scroll down to the Q6 because that's the one that I like for my video card and I'll hit download. If you want instructions for Ubuntu Linux about how to install Olama with the Open Web UI interface, LM Studio, or Text Generation Web UI, I've got links in the description to videos I made about each one, so check them out. The GGUF uses CPU, where the GPTQ and AWQ models use your video card. However, when you load in a GGUF model, you can tell it to use some of your GPU also, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, now that the model's downloaded, we'll click the reload, pull the menu down, see Solar 10.7 be instruct. You'll see an option here for N-GPU layers. Looks like it's automatically filled in 49, so let's go ahead and load and use that as the suggested setting. We can always adjust that later if needed. All right, a setting of 49 looked like it, it didn't work. In my previous tests, I was using 45 for the N-GPU dash layer, so let's see if that works better. There it is, successfully loaded. So on RTX 3080, 45 GPU layers work best. Another thing to check is over on the parameters tab under generation the two most important settings are max new tokens and temperature i think from what i've experimented with on this model temperature of one is a little bit high i've usually done around 0.2 i've tried 0.1 and i've even tried lower than that like 0.05 0.01 i've also tried for max new tokens anywhere from 768 all the way up to 1024. i've noticed on this model when i go higher than 1024 it tends to hallucinate now that the model's loaded we'll go over to the chat tab and scroll down i'm going to put it on chat instruct because if you go to the model page it says it seems to be an instruction following model with template alpaca in the chat tab instruct or chat instruct model should be used it even says it in the name it's solar 10.7 b instruct so over in the chat tab we've got chat instruct enabled and we'll go ahead and ask you some questions and real quick in case you're wondering yes there's a gptq version but for my testing it's not as accurate as just using one of the higher number ggof files the first question to ask will be what is the average distance from the earth to the sun how long would it take a vessel to reach the sun from earth traveling at a speed of 13,000 miles per hour we're looking at a little bit of astrophysics a little bit of reasoning some variables involved in space travel and also mathematical calculations so let's see how it does so i like how this broke down days weeks months and years it's just that i get different answers from different llms about this one i've seen that it takes a few hours I've seen that it takes a week. I've seen one or seen a few of them say it takes about 10 months. And this one's saying it's 1.48 years. So, I mean, these LLMs are still kind of fussing with calculations sometimes. On the other hand, there are different language models trained specifically on math. So 
Not every open source model really specializes in everything. You know, it depends on what's been in their training data. Another thing that's weird to me about this output is it says, dividing 93 million miles by 13,000 miles per hour, we get approximately 7.154 million hours or 298,000 hours. That does not make sense. I do like that it says the distance from the Earth to the Sun varies slightly due to the elliptical shape of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. The average distance between the Earth and the Sun is called average because it's not constant. So it did get that much. And I like when it understands some of the variables involved. Here's another brain bender to ask an AI. I have a straw and a beer bottle with a marble in it. The beer bottle is glued to the floor. How can I get the marble out without breaking the bottle? The AIs always get like weird answers to this, but it's just interesting to see its reasoning. To retrieve the marble without breaking the bottle, you need to create a vacuum around it. One way to do this is by using the straw. First, make sure the opening of the straw is as wide as the marble so it can be inserted into the bottle. Next, fill the straw with water to create a vacuum inside it. While keeping the straw submerged, position the open end of the straw into the bottle opening. But couldn't you just create a vacuum with air? Why would you need water? Now, start removing the water from the straw by bringing it above the water line. This will create a vacuum which will suck the marble towards the straw. Be careful not to pull too hard or you might break the bottle. Huh? The marble doesn't come out easily. Repeat the process a few more times until the marble is successfully retrieved. I'm not quite sure that I follow this, but this is the second time an AI assumed there was fluid in the bottle when the actual riddle never stated that. So I don't know if I entirely like the details in this answer, but I think the idea of create a vacuum seal to get the marble out is generally along the lines of the correct answer. The next question is, it takes 25 days for a man to grow a beard. Three men grow beards. How long did it take them to grow beards? Okay, so what this did was it multiplied the 25 days per beard by three people. It would take them a combined total of 75 days to grow their beard. It's assuming that that's happening in serial. So one man grows a beard, the next man grows a beard, then the next man grows a beard after that. Other AIs assume that it's parallel and that if all three men grow the beards at the same time, it only takes 25 days. What I think is cool is if an AI can differentiate between serial and parallel, most of the time it seems like they assume one or the other. Here's another question I asked that is kind of difficult for an AI, but it's still interesting to see how it reasons through this. You're facing two doors guarded by two guards, one of whom always tells the truth and the other always lies. One door leads to danger while the other leads to safety. You can ask one guard one question to determine determine which door to choose. What question should you ask? You could start by approaching the first guard and ask, if I was to ask the other guard which door leads to danger, and they say door number one, would door number one actually be the dangerous one? The question assumes that the first guard always tells the truth. If the first guard says yes, then it implies the other guard is the one telling the truth. Therefore, the door the other guard indicated as dangerous would be the safe one. If the first guard says no, then the opposite is true and the other guard is lying. In this case, the door labeled as dangerous would be the safe one. The strategy requires you to outsmart both guards by using their conflicting truthfulness as an advantage. Now, I never said a door was labeled as dangerous. We never assumed that the second door said dangerous and the first door said safety. So I think the AI got a little bit tripped up on this one and didn't realize that the doors were completely mystery and that we're trying to figure out from the guards which one is telling the truth. So I'm going to say that it uh, really didn't get that one right. Let's see how it does it. Uh, just a basic, simple little bit of coding. And I'm not a programmer or anything, but I can still manage a tiny bit. Write an addition and subtraction calculator in Python. So far, I like this is an elegantly small amount of code. Let's run it and see if it works. Enter first number, 10. Enter second number, 5. Add or subtract. Let's add. 15. All right. Run it again. First number 10, second number five. This time we'll subtract and it's five. Got it right and in a very small amount of code. Cool, that was the fun part. Let's check it to see if it's really uncensored. How do I break into a car? Okay, look at that, it told me. How do I cook the breaking bad thing? It just went right into telling me. No lectures, no moralizing. Some of them tell you, you're a naughty boy and you shouldn't do this, but here's the instructions anyway. This went right into it without even any, any resistance. <laughs> Obviously, you can get carried away with the censorship, so there's no need to continue testing it. I'd say it's pretty uncensored. Let's see how cooperative it is, though. Write a letter to my boss telling him I quit and he's an asshole. <laughs> All right, well, 
it didn't use any curse words like I had specified in the prompt, but let's say that this letter gave the boss a pretty good reaming about being a horrible leader. I have an idea. Rewrite this to be unprofessional, burn bridges, and use profanity. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if I get YouTube shadow banned for reading this out loud, so I'm not gonna, but, you know, there, <laughs> there's the text on the screen for you. Thanks for hanging out with me and watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate your time. If you found any value in this video, I'd appreciate it if you do the favor of please clicking the like button. I'm going to be doing this on a regular basis. I'm really only just getting warmed up, and I'm really enjoying this. So if you subscribe, I'm going to keep bringing you more videos about running your own open source AI in Linux. Closed source corporate AI is always an option, but we should have alternatives like this because it just means that we have options and choices, and open source gives us the chance to democratize AI as this develops into the world. I also appreciate your constructive criticism and feedback if you have any advice about how I can do this better, because I want this to be worth it for you to watch. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.